29th of September 2023, episode 180 of this and that and what the fuck else. This one I'll be talking a bit about the EU and immigration and the Zotsi fiasco in Canada. And it is a, it's a good back page for the guys. But first, let's take a look at some winter scenes in Russia. Decorations for the Snowtail Dynamo Park, Khabarovsk. Khabarovsk is a city in the Amur River in the Russian Far East near the Chinese border. Photos, Yevgenia Finko. I love Russia. Enjoy. I like those images and uh, the photographer did a great job with it. And then we get to the South Africa. Bumlani Majorzi. Adrian Gore, the CEO of Discovery, says that the government needs the private sector if it wants NHI to succeed. That's not what Adrian should be saying. South Africa doesn't need NHI. Adrian should be opposing NHI in its entirety. Every CEO should be opposing NHI. And I agree with him, but this Discovery CEO was also one of those maniacs that basically forced people to take the snake bite. And I have heard stories that there are people busy with litigation. Let's see. And then we get to Russia. More than 20 countries attend epidemic prevention drills in Russia. Russia holds an international training event for rapid response teams who handle infectious disease outbreaks. Now, now there's a lot of people that will have different ideas about an article like this. And I'm going to give you another perspective to consider. Russia is preparing for an infectious disease outbreak. And by definition, they are preparing for biological warfare. The same with China. China has prepared their citizens. Russia is not doing that with its citizens, but they are doing these drills. You should think about that. And then we get to the EU. And this is that chick from Moldova. Total American puppet. Total. They can offer, but the European Union does not give money for the development of crime. People need to know this. This is words that she utters. The headline is EU doesn't fund criminal groups. Moldova's president, Maya Sandu, believes political opposition is criminal. She threatens residents of towns and villages against voting for political opposition, saying their areas will not be developed. Moldova has also recently banned the pro-Russian Shore Opposition Party, calling it unconstitutional. And the commentary is, it's a slippery slope morphing into Zelensky, you know. We're going to be watching closely for any traces of white substances under Sandu's nose. I am astounded that the Europeans are taking this type of battering from their political leaders. I cannot understand it. But from what I see, the people are beginning to wake up and there's a lot of these leaders that are going to find themselves in a tight spot very soon. 
And then we get to this guy. Bill Gates says planting trees to solve climate crisis is complete nonsense. And the guy asks, are we science people or are we idiots? Every year, Bill Gates is a major donor to cause fighting climate change, both on a societal and personal level. Every year he writes a $10 million check to a company to buy clean energy for others as a way to offset carbon emissions generated by himself. But his money only goes to climate solutions proven by technology, not untested approaches such as planting trees. What the fuck is that? But I cannot understand that this guy is still walking around freely. I cannot understand it. He was one of the major pushers of the snake bite. And the facts are coming out now. The people are taking the dive for that. When is this guy going to be brought to book? And then we get to Italy and this immigration story. Maloney's government to pass deportation decree for migrants. Foreigners who lie about their age to benefit from protection scheme reserved for unaccompanied minors or are considered a threat to public order and national security will be deported under a new security decree said to be approved on Wednesday. Now, one thing is for sure. Mm. Ursula van der Crazy is going to be all over her if she tries that stunt. But it seems to me that there is now Europeans that are busy waking up and seeing this immigration thing for what it is. It's actually an invasion. And then we get to the UK. Multiculturalism has failed. UK Interior Minister Braverman said enough as she annihilates those who enter the UK and live parallel lives that undermine stability of British society. And the commentary is Braverman's already taking flack for statements with UK Scottish National Party blasting her as unfit for office and demanding immediate apology. Now, there's a few things in this article that I have to mention. First of all, this girl doesn't look like a brat. This is not, in my eyes, this is not brat. But I find it almost hilarious that she's now the one that is complaining about the immigration. But I think the British has left it too late. And then we get to the memes. This one, just, it's Friday. Smile. She knows damn well nobody is paying attention to the zebras. <laughs> yeah. And then we get to that Zatsi story that played off in Canada. Poland demands Canada's parliamentary speaker to resign. Poland's deputy foreign minister has called for the resignation of the Speaker of the House of Commons of Canada after local legislators, together with the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and Ukraine's Vladimir Zelensky, held a round of applause for a Ukrainian-born Zatsi SS soldier. According to Warsaw, Anthony Rota's house was compromised by openly praising a member of the SS. But that uh, Speaker has resigned. But it should have been uh, Trudeau that resigned, but as usual, that Trudeau, he spin it in all directions and eventually ended by blaming the Russians. And more from Poland. Poland's education minister says he has taken steps towards the possible extradition of the Zatsi honored by Canadian Parliament during Zelensky's visit. And then here is the man himself. Trudeau. This terrible mistake is being politicized by Russia and their supporters and is being used to spread false propaganda. And Dagny comments, you and your team invited a literal Zazi. 
You and Zelensky had a meeting with him. You gave him a standing ovation. So it is on you. Resign. Well, I wonder what is going to be the end of this story. But Justin has put his foot deep into his mouth. And then we get to South Africa and the Sasa Grants. Listen to this one. Sasa. 510 rand per child, 2,090 per disabled child, 2,090 for older persons, 60 to 74, 350 unemployed persons. An unemployed mother of three disabled children living with two grandparents receives 10,800 rand per month. Let that sink in. And then ask yourself, how the hell is the country affording this? This is absolutely crazy stuff. 10,800 rand a month. And what is a pensioner? And then we get to the Ukraine. Interview with a former client of the Biotechscom clinic. Ukraine leaks exclusive. A few months ago, I published an investigation about the infamous Biotexcom surrogacy clinic, which has turned out is a screen for selling newborn babies abroad. Europeans who are unable to have children for medical reasons or because of their non-traditional sexual orientation solve their problems simply by buying children in Ukraine. I managed to contact several clients of the clinic who confirmed these facts. But the Western media is quiet about this and the Western taxpayers that are funding that fuck up there in the Ukraine is unaware of it. And then we get to this in the US and this is for me actually a joke. Florida unveils a new high-speed rail line. What does this mean for the rest of the country? The train travel between Orlando and Miami Brightline trains will run nearly every hour, covering the full road in a little over three hours with stops in Fort Lauderdale, Boca Raton and West Palm Beach. And they make a mood of a song and dance now about this one train, one line, while they piss billions out on wars around the globe and don't spend anything on their own infrastructure. In China, they build 5,000 kilometers of high-speed rail every year. Let that sink in, Americans. And then we have this from America. The US will not withdraw its armed forces from Niger, Pentagon Chief Lloyd Austin. France made its own independent decision based on its own reasons and it's up to France to comment on that decision. As for our forces in Niger, we have not made any significant changes to their operation, he says. Earlier Macron agreed to the ask of the new anti-colonial power in Niger and withdraw French troops. And isn't it amazing? The Americans they will not withdraw their troops. Because why are they there to start off with? But that's how they operate around the globe. They put their bases wherever they like and they have their soldiers there and they run those countries as if those countries are their servants. And then finally we get to this one. Brainy and Coke, the logic test quoted, tweeted on Twitter. In the late 80s and early 90s, we, the WEF, were searching the ANC officials living in exile camps and integrated them already at that time into our community. And Brainy and Coke responds, How much of the decline of South Africa was designed by the WEF in return for wealth to these cadres, they managed to incorporate into their elitist club and which South African billionaires helped them. We can see it. 
we see how our country is falling apart and has been robbed blind. The theft and corruption is totally out of control. But it seems to me a large portion of the black community don't care about the stealing and the theft that's going on. And now we get to the back page, and this is for the guys. Sorry girls, no men in it today. Only for the guys. Enjoy. Wow, some good looking girls there. I especially like those two with the beers. Some nice beers they are holding there. Please give me a like and a subscribe and share the thing. And thank you for your support.